All right, let's look at the third part of this assignment. Um, some of you may have noticed that uh, my screen, my um, VMD display window is not white. And you can, you can change this if you look under here in the display options, um, or I guess it's graphics, and go to colors. This will list all the uh, different categories of colors. And if you scroll down here, um, where is it? Display, background, you can pick different different colors. Um, you know, probably some of these colors aren't that good, but the, the default, of course, is white, and um, that works most of the time. I just I just prefer silver, and you can change the different um, um, things to if you experiment with this. But for now, let me switch it back to white, just because that's what most of you are going to to see, okay? So I'm starting off with the, the my cell, and I just made it all licorice, um, just the SDS molecules and licorice. So in this part of the assignment, I want to find out a little bit about um, the solvation shell of water around this um, around this my cell. Now, one of the students this semester actually pointed out that it might be a good thing to use the surface representation to get an idea of the water surface. And that's actually a great idea. And uh, so I stole this idea. And for example, um, if we want to um, show all of the waters within a certain distance, there's actually a within command. So here you can see that I have, I'm selecting the tip three or water residues and within two angstroms of an SDS residue. Okay, well, that works pretty well, and uh, here you can see I use the surface, and I've made a, a color. I've done it by color ID because that turns out to be to work pretty well for different surfaces. So let me turn this on, and this is what it looks like. Um, what, to get this, I had to change this probe radius. The probe radius is basically um, the distance between the molecules you've selected, which can make a surface. And if I take this down to the default. I think the default is 1.4. You can see that there's actually not much of a connected surface. The waters that are only two angstroms from the SDS molecules are actually not, they do not form a well connected surface. You, you may notice some things about this. For example, the waters tend to be congregated around the head groups, which is exactly what you would expect. Um, because those are the polar head groups. But just to make this look a little bit more contiguous, I changed the probe radius up to four, which, which gives me this surface. Okay, so um, this should really give you pretty much the surface of the micelle. Um, you can just apply this to different, to different probe depths, right? Here's a radius of five. I made this cyan. You can see a little bit of the other surface poking through. If you want to, you can make um, this transparent, right? And again, if you want to, you can do a render of this. Again, remember to do tachyon for this. And if you do this, um, it doesn't really it doesn't really allow you to change the resolution here. So I'm going to browse. Back, this will take me a second. To get it into the right place. Pro radius. I won't waste time doing this a lot. So this will take a while. This is a pretty big, a pretty big image. Okay. So I also did a radius of ten. Of course, this is going to be bigger. And um, I want to do something a little bit different too, because if you think about it, 
there's going to be a difference between um, a probe a probe depth is looking at SDS molecules, in other words, a water anywhere near an SDS molecule, even a tail, and um, a probe depth that actually just looks at the head groups. And the simplest way for me to look at the head groups in one selection was to do it this way. Name OS3, the, one of the oxygens, OS1, I didn't do these in order. So I named all the different sulfate oxygens individually and the sulfate S. So if I do this, this gives me a slightly a slightly different surface. Let me go down and make it opaque. And I made this orange just so I can do some of it. This is a slightly different surface and the way I can see it's a slightly different surface is I'm going to make this transparent and I'm going to turn on the other surface. And actually if you use appropriate colors you'll get a different color where there, so in other words, the orange overlaid on the blue makes it kind of this purple color. So you can see where the surfaces are a little bit different. This may be useful um, for, for, you know, contrasting different surfaces that you get. Now, <clears throat> the other thing I asked you in this assignment, which is going to be, which is going to be admittedly really hard for you to do is, can I count the waters, right? This is, this is useful. How many waters are there in the first solvation shell? How many are in the second solvation shell? And so on. Well, it turns out that this is fairly easy to do, but you have to be kind of prescient. You have to do something we haven't done yet. You have to use some command line scripting and using the console. It's called the TK console because that's the language um, that it uses. So in order to do this, go to the extensions and here you'll find a TK console. Okay, so what you're going to get is this terminal window coming up and it's going to be a lot like a regular shell window that that will learn about, uh, actually learn more about both of these later. But what you can do is um, you have to change to your uh, current directory where all this stuff is happening, right? You use that with CD. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Well, this is a this is a little bit different window from our shell windows we're going to work at later because it understands TK the TK language and simple scripting. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something really similar to what I did here, right? I'm going to use this selection, but I'm going to assign this to a variable name, right? So in other words, I'm to do this, I'm going to say set. I'm going to name the variable and since these are waters within two angstroms of my SDS molecules I'm going to call it two watt for two water. Okay so this is now a variable name. Now I'm going to put the selection in square brackets um, and I have to give this atom select command. So it's going to say select these atoms from the top molecule right and then I'll put the selection in quotes. Res name tip three, and this is going to be exactly what's typed up here. Res name tip three and within two of res name SDS. Close quote, close square bracket. And what this will do is it'll give me a little atom select counter, which tells me I made a selection. Now let me go back here and, and say, this atom select, this is a, a TK command. Top, this refers to the top molecule. And if you go up to the main window, up here, the T is for top. If I load more than one molecule here, it'll list different molecules, but only one molecule can ever be top. A is for active, D is for display, and F is for fixed. Okay. All right, you can experiment with these to see what these different things do if you click them on or off, right? So now if I click the active off, my commands are not going to have any effect on it, for example. All right, so, so now this selection, to refer to the selection 2WAT, I refer to it with a dollar sign 2WAT. So anytime I use, want to refer to this particular selection as a variable, this is the variable name. 
Okay, so it turns out I can count all the atoms, atoms, not molecules, or all the things that are in the selection. So if this selection is defined as a residue name, it's effectively counting molecules. If I made this selection by some sort of name or atom name selection, it would count atoms. So right now I'm counting residues, which in this case a TIP3 residue is a water molecule. And all I have to do is give this command called num. So I do this. Specify the variable, type num, and it returns 273. So there are 273 waters within two angstroms. All right, this saves you from having to count them individually. I can do the same thing. One of the nice things about many of these shells is you can use the up arrow. I'm now typing the up arrow to recall my commands. Here's my initial command. If I want to know how many are within 10, all I have to do is go back and change the parts of this command that change. So I'm going to change the 2 to a 10. All right, and I hit return. So now notice it's giving me a new selection counter. Now I can just recall my previous counting command and change the 2 to 10. And now there's over 8,000 water molecules within 10 angstroms, right? So um, that kind of makes sense. There's 10 10,000 water molecules, or 8,000 water molecules within this surface, and there's, let me turn this one off, there's um, about 200 water molecules within this surface. Okay, so this gives me a nice way to count the water molecules within the surface. Um, so that's the end of this little this little screencast. We'll keep doing these as long as uh, you guys find them useful.